Hello, my name is Antonia and this is Perry Pictures and today's tutorial is going to be on how to use Autodesk Sketchbook on an iPad. Let's go ahead and look at our interface here. When you open it up, it's going to show you this screen and what we have here on our left toolbar is our brush editor. So we're able to click on here to reach our brush library, select our pens or brushes and over here, we have these sliders. If you slide up and down, this will adjust the size of your brush. The second slider that's on the bottom half of your brush editor is going to adjust your opacity. Let's go ahead and look at the table editor on the right side of your screen. This is your layers editor. The plus sign at the very top is how you're going to be able to create new layers. The color wheel on the bottom will switch this window to a color menu and you're able to go through here to find your colors. You're also able to bring up your colors on your pucks over here if you have the pucks enabled. If you do not have the pucks enabled, a great way to bring up your pucks is to just tap this little circle on the bottom here. Ink drop your color. You can do it from the color picker by tapping this button here on the bottom of your window. It'll bring up this wheel of options, which also includes the eyedrop and the little icon that looks like a traffic light. Next to the eyedropper is going to bring up your color puck. We'll be able to pick a color from the color wheel or the Copic library, rather than trying to scroll through this. So that's my preferred method. And this puck that I just pulled up, you're able to keep on your window so I can just put this up here in the corner. And we also have the brush library accessible this way as well. When editing your layers, the very bottom layer, just like on the desktop version, is going to be your background editor. If you're like me and you don't want to color on a solid white background, you can drop the brightness here and change that or if you wanted to have say a different colored background if you're trying to use a certain tone you can do that as well and then let's go ahead and throw something on our screen here we'll just do a very quick flower um, you're able to edit the way that this shows up by clicking once on the layer itself and it's going to bring up your layers menu for each individual layer. This bar across the center here with the blue line is going to raise and drop your opacity. Your blend modes are underneath that. All layers are automatically set to normal but you're able to navigate to this menu and adjust it. Screen, linear dodge, glow, linear burn, lighten, overlay, soft light, hard light, hue and saturation, and the all too familiar color dodge. <laughs> Other things you can do is lock your layer. You can adjust color. So say you drew something or you colored something, but you want to see what it would look like in a different color without having to recolor the whole thing. You're able to make these adjustments. The hue and color saturation. Other things we're able to do from here is clear the layer if you wanted to completely start over you're able to copy and paste duplicate the layer just by clicking on that i now have two copies of this layer you can merge all so now those two layers that i just created are now one layer i have collapsed them just by clicking on merge all and then if i wanted to copy the layer create new and then paste what i copied I can do that and now I have two of this. Also, if you would like to scale, you can just do that by navigating to this transform tools and then you can just use your fingers to scale. One of the things I actually forgot to mention in my Autodesk sketchbook ultimate guide that I had produced using the desktop on Mac was the ability to flip your canvas. The way you flip your canvas is you just tap that dot again at the bottom of the screen and right here at the very bottom right side is the flip the canvas uh, button so you can just click that. Now looking at the top toolbar moving across this way we can find that this first button will bring up your Autodesk main menu that allows you to create new sketch, export what you've already created, um, go to your gallery so you can look at all your other drawings that you've already worked on and that are saved to your gallery 
or system preferences and you can come here to system preferences to make adjustments. The next button across to the top toolbar is your edit undo button and beside that is your redo button. There's another way to edit undo. If you tap on this bottom button again, there is an edit undo button that populates here in the bottom corner as well. We also have another button here on the bottom left of this wheel that looks like an edit undo arrow, but what this actually does is send you to your last brush. If you don't want to have to pull up your brush library and go back through here, if say I was using this brush and I wanted to go back to that other pen, I can do that this way. So that's pretty handy. Next to that is your selection tools. So here we have the lasso tool. We can also do a rectangular selection. Let's say we're creating a tree silhouette here and we're going to go ahead and fill that in. A selection tool is a great way to create lineless shapes. So you're able to draw with your selection tool color inside your selection, and you have yourself a lineless drawing, which is kind of nice. So that's kind of fun with the selection tools. We also have next to it the transform tools, which if we click on this compass here, we're able to move, pan up and down, left to right. If we click on the distort tool, we're able to bring in our corners and distort our image. Um, maybe pull this left to right, distort it that way. We can also rotate with the rotation arrows. We can flip vertically, we can flip horizontally. So those are your transform tools. Here we have our guides. And it tells you right here in the bottom corner when you first click on it, tap, drag within the ruler to move, pivot within the ruler with two fingers to rotate and double tap within the ruler to reset. So tap and drag within the ruler and I can move it. Use two fingers to rotate it. Hi guys, Antonia from the future here to let you know that if this ever happens to you where you're trying to draw on the canvas and nothing's showing up, try to click on your selection tools and unselect whatever may be selected and then try again. Yep, works like a charm. And once you do that, you can just kind of color inside the ruler here. We also have a curved ruler and you can adjust just how curved it is. You can make like a Nike swoosh if you wanted to. So let's say we just wanna throw this Nike swoosh on here. We can definitely do that. Um, but you can create other curves as well. You can make them kind of mild. You can make them pretty extreme. And of course we have our ellipse tool as well. So we can create a nice smooth round ellipse shape. Next to those, we have our symmetry tools. So you click on this and you're able to create a vertical symmetry. So if I wanted to like make, let's say I'm making a butterfly, I can certainly do that. Or let's try a horizontal symmetry. So let's say we wanted to do a bit of a scene here with our horizontal symmetry. And then what if we decided to do a landscape here with some trees on the water. So now that we've got this kind of landscape going on here, and let's bring our opacity down a little bit and put some in the background give us a little bit of depth here. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because I don't wanna get too carried away. But now supposing that we have this scene here, we can go ahead and turn that off, grab ourselves a smudge tool. And then with that, we will and we'll stay just under that horizon line, that water line there. And then maybe even we can take this a step further there we go. And just like that, we've used the horizontal symmetry to create this beautiful landscape relatively quickly. And I may even um, want to try and bring out some of this color. So I'm going to go in here just briefly, grab this color. Mm, that's not exactly what I had in mind. And add just a little bit more 
maybe fog rising off of the water. And you know, that was just very quickly done using a couple of brushes and the symmetry tool, the ruler to create a horizon line and then the symmetry tool to create our silhouette of our tree line and let that reflect into the water. Easy peasy. So let's go to new sketch, create. And looking over here now, once we've passed those, we have our drawing tools. So if you wanted to make a straight line, we certainly can. If we wanna create some circles or squares, we can do that as well. Predictive stroke, we'll snap those right into place for you. Let's see how well it gives me a square. Just like that, that's brilliant. Here we're able to pull up our images and import. So I can import that, can make it smaller with my hands. This is something that the iPad does that you're not gonna be able to do on your desktop. You can use your hands to scale an image. We have our perspective tools, of course, which are a lot of fun as well. So we're able to, goodness, goodness, goodness. Let's say we wanted to create the side of a building here. We certainly could do that. Maybe some other buildings here as well. And I have this currently set to one point perspective, but we're able to use two points perspective, three point perspective, the points are adjustable. You can move them where you want them to be. So again, those are perspective tools, one point perspective, three point perspective, two point perspective, <laughs> which I guess I skipped. But when you're on these perspective tools, not only are you able to move your grids around or your points around quite like this, to create different perspectives. And hopefully you're seeing that with the way the lines are shifting. You're also able to adjust whether or not you want to, to freehand follow these lines. Normally when you draw on these, it will snap to the grid. So you're getting these lines that are going to, even if I draw my pen wherever I want, it's only gonna draw on the perspective grid unless I click, so let's clear this for a second. And I, by the way, I'm clearing this just by tapping on the layer itself and clearing my canvas from that menu. But if you click on this, it turns the snap to grid off. So if you would like to freehand follow the lines on this grid, you're able to do that. And then if you have something that you wanna draw that's not on the grid, like say a ghost, curved shape, you can do that as well. The text button allows you to write in here. You can tap on it to type in your text, or you can try writing it in. See, very cool. <laughs> One of the features that's new to me that I didn't, that I haven't seen on desktop, but that I think is very cool that they added to mobile is this time-lapse video. So we've already started recording. When I hit that, there's a little red dot inside the camera icon to let you know that you're recording. So you're able to come in here and create, we'll go with another butterfly drawing just very quickly. And now that we've done that, I will hit this to stop the time lapse and you can save it to your photo library. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. It's a really nice feature that I've only ever seen in Procreate before, but now we also have that in Autodesk on the iPad mobile app. And last but not least, on the top toolbar here, we have the final icon, which is actually just going to hide all your other menus and help you maximize your drawing surface. Other buttons you have here is this little paper clip in the corner. If you drag up on it, you're gonna get your brush library. If you drag down on it, you're gonna be able to go to your layers menu. And right there in the center, if you click and hold, it's going to show you your colors. So that said, I'm going to go through and also create videos for the other apps in the future. So I've already done one on desktop Mac, and then later I will do one on a Windows application using my Surface Pro as well as one on mobile. So those are coming. If you are not using an iPad and you are trying to learn the Autodesk sketchbook drawing software, subscribe to my channel because I will be building tutorials on how to use this application on other platforms.